You're already over on Tuesday, tier three, first class. I'm just liked it already. Brilliant. I only just come on. I like that. Um, Kettle's board, tier three. Uh, so we're getting old kettle on. Tea brewing. As everybody, a bit sunny again today. It's brightened up here. I don't know what it's like where you are. Um, so just like, we're going to talk about a bit of creativity today. Um, so how we can be creative. And um, certainly in lockdown, I think I've been quite creative with my cooking. So, um, and I've got a biscuit today. I've gone a bit old school. Uh, hello, Gemma. I've gone, um, I've gone for a little uh, malted milk. I think it's an underrated biscuit myself. A little underrated biscuit. Um, I like a nice dunk with that one. Good biscuit, the malted milk. Uh, Croft is in. Uh, that's great. We've got a, I've got a question. Um, I've done tea. I've done biscuits. I'm going to cake related question today. Cake related question. So I hope to get some answers. Um, my cake related question is um, how tall, and I'll take this in meters or feet because I've done all that. How tall is the tallest cake ever made? So how tall in meters or feet is the tallest cake ever made? So that's the question. Um, so get your answers in there. Just put my teeth. Get a few people on, get a few more people on. I need some answers to how big my cake is. Um, that's good. No answers yet. I think everybody's just waiting for you, Crofty. Um, tallest cake ever made. Come on, don't disappoint, Matt. 500 metres? Hi, <laughs> Mouse. Good to see you. Well, virtually, anyway. Um, 500 metres. Gemma, are you taking over the mantle of... Ridiculous officers, 500 meters. <laughs> are we 500 meters? Are we aware how big 500 meters is? That's massive, that's huge. The Burj Khalifa is only 828 meters. That's the tallest building in the world. Um, Scarfell Pike's 978 meters. Um, quiz question that was what's taller, tallest no made building or Scarfell Pike? Scarfell Park, about 150 meters, anyway. Um, three and a half meters. It would be a lot of cakes. It would be a lot. It would be a massive amount of cakes. Five hundred meters worth of cake. Five hundred meters worth of Jaffa cakes. That'd be worth having. Uh, I've gone chilled today. I'm chilled. Um, maybe that's because I left the window open. Anyway, anybody else want to answer? Tallest cake. What have I got? Five hundred meters. Two hundred and eighty meters. So, so even Matt thought his answer was ridiculous, and somebody nearly doubled it. Um, 11 meter, uh, 10 meters. Sorry, I can't read 3.45 meters. That's very, very specific. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about creativity today, and it's kind of one of the things that everybody wants and really craves to be a little bit more creative. And, um, but we're all kind of quite creative, but the trouble is, we kind of associate it a little bit with, um, you know, like playing the saxophone or being able to draw or something like that. And creativity can be a few more, a few more things than that, so don't worry about it. Um, so what is it? Um, five minutes from ten, my minutes to win it, Clara. Uh, I can just tell you right now, you're not winning it. Um, uh, what, what is creativity? Well, um, somebody said if you have great ideas, that's imaginative, but to implement them is the creative bit. So interesting implementation is, is a key part of creativity. Um, do we win, Kate? Yeah, you have to come and pick it up personally, Sam. That's the only problem for you, mate. Um, the, <laughs> The thing with the creativity is uh, novel and appropriate. It's got to be novel, so it's got to be new, and it's got to be appropriate, so it's got to be workable. You can't just have a wacky idea like I said. I said, um, you know, what can we do with marshmallows? Somebody said, oh, uh, build a ladder to the moon. Well, it's very novel, but it's, it's not appropriate. It can't be implemented. Um, whereas if you said, like, build a ball pit, ball pit for dolls or something like that, maybe a bit more workable. So it's got to be novel, got to be appropriate. That's two things. That's two things it's got to be. Um, now, sometimes if, if, if you do know somebody creative, if you think you're quite creative, we can often we often find it that it's quite easy. Um, so if somebody, you know, I'm sure we've all done a bit of singing, whether it's in the shower or whatever, but sometimes you'll get somebody and they'll say, um, well, just sing from your diaphragm. And we'll go, yeah, right, OK, yeah, my diaphragm. And like we all just go, Ooh, but somebody who can sing just naturally does that. So creativity sometimes there are people who are better naturally at it and it's harder. So some people who are creative find it very easy and don't even see themselves as creative is what I'm after. Now, you can answer this question in chat if you like, just to keep the chat flowing. But my question is, where do you have your best ideas? 
So when you are creative, when you perceive yourself as creative and have great ideas, so just just type it in the chat. Let's just, just just move it there. So where do you have your best ideas? Anybody got an answer for me? Just put that in the chat. Where do you have your good ideas? I just want to drink tea, really. Nobody has any good ideas. In downtime. So Gemma has them in downtime. Anybody else? Anybody else have good ideas? Where do you have them? Where do you have them? I'll take anything as long as it's legal. In bed. When I'm falling asleep at night in bed. Running. Right, okay. Interestingly, the first five answers come up. This is brilliant. Nobody's gone at work. Yeah, that's the first thing. Has their best idea at work. So sometimes work doesn't create the environment for us to be creative because it's putting us in a very stilted. So our brain's in a different place when we're creative. Yeah, that's one of the first things. So don't try and force creativity, which you often try and do. Um, the second thing is, is often what happens is we have to be a bit more relaxed. So I'm sure if you've been in a scenario where, well, you know, you've been in a discussion with somebody and they've kind of got, and there's a bit of like to and fro, and, and I don't want to use the word argument, but you know what I mean. And then you kind of walk away from that scenario and um, and then you're outside or you're finished. And you go, oh, I've got this killer answer now. This is my killer answer. Why didn't I have that killer answer five minutes ago? And that's how our brains kind of work. So there's this whole brain thing that I've done a bit on decision making, a bit on unconscious bias. But we have to work our brain as well, which makes it hard. So the other thing we have, the other challenge we have that we have to overcome is our expertise is a barrier to creativity. So often, if you can get someone from outside your business, they, they can be really helpful because they don't have the expertise in your business because your expertise is the blocker. We can't kind of say, oh, no, we can't do that or that won't work. Or I'm so ingrained in the business, I can't see what's actually going on. So, you, you know, you can get people people out. And that's why sometimes other businesses are like nick businesses of someone else. Um, uh, Grace, your chat works. Um, it's first class. Um, so that, that's one of the things. I've just done my biscuit. Um that's one of the things other people see an opportunity that the business didn't see because they were too close for it. So our expertise is a barrier. So how are we going to get a bit more creative? I've got a couple of things. Firstly, get the brain going doodle. We encourage doodling without loosening the brain up. That's one thing. Do something different. We've never had, we, we've never had an opportunity to try and do something new. You know, a good way to see am I, am I trying to do something is um, is quite simply, when was the last time you did something for the first time? So constantly push yourself to do something new, to push yourself into a different um, arena. Change your environment, environment for creativity. That's why certain companies are going to be unknown. This is not an advertising slot. Um, but, but they do a lot for their people about where they work, how they work, what their environment works. So at home now, that's where we're all working. Think about where you are. Where can you generate your better ideas? Do we need to change room? Do we need to sit on a beanbag and that kind of stuff? Um, move about. I've done this before. Merrily a pet. So um, please watch that TED Talk. Um, walk in will make you more creative. It will have, make you have better ideas. Anybody who's been on a Hemsley phrase course will know we use toys in the training room. Toys, fiddling, work. So get yourself some toys. Little bendy men, little koosh balls. Those things will stimulate your brain. Will stimulate all the little nerve endings on your hand. Um, write yourself a hundred word story. There's a bit called speed stories. Just write yourself a hundred word story. Um, that gets the brain sharp. Maximum of a hundred words, and just write it out. It's actually an exercise that we use on Taskmaster level. Um, there's a there's a re another really uh, interesting exercise. And if you've got kids, you can try it with kids as well, and that will show you how the how the younger brain is a lot freer. Um, just draw thirty circles on a page, six by five grid, thirty circles, and then. Make pictures out of those 30 circles. Um, you know, you might draw the sun as an example. You might draw a record of CD as an example. But how quickly can you fill up the 30? Give it to a kid. Give yourself a time limit of like about three minutes and see what happens. Because believe me, the, the pre-teenagers will do it pretty quick. Um, and we'll still be struggling. Because we're very, very logical in the way that we want to work. Other things we can do, collaborate. Collaborate with other people, work with other people, particularly people who don't work like you. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, try and do something you love, which I've mentioned before. Look outside your business. So go elsewhere into another arena. Now, I, I did some work a long time ago in a bank, and the, the bank was set up in a, in a shopping center. And um, 
it was it was way before banks and everything was opening at certain times and all that. It was like Wednesday half day, you know, close all the banks always close at three on Wednesday. And they shut their half day closing for the young people. They probably can't believe this, but all banks used to shut at three, half day closing on Wednesday. Um, but, but because this branch, as it was called, or it was called a store, in fact, that I was working at, um, they had to do shopping centre hours. And um, so we sent people out and we sent them to um, find out what they liked about other shops, uh, proper old school, believe me. Um, so what was it that attracted them? One of the guys came back and he said um, that he went into the Disney store because it made him happy. Because it was always colourful, there was always music playing, and there was always somebody to say good morning to when he walked in the door. And that, in fact, is where some of those ideas have come from. That's what people like, so they took those ideas. I'm still not saying people were walking into banks, but they tried to put music on. This was particularly around Saturday banking and um, shopping centre banks. Um, that was one of the things that we did. Um, sometimes do nothing. Um, and, um, you know, that's a good thing to do. You know, somebody said sit down when I'm falling asleep in downtime. These are, the, these are the times that you can be more creative, so I'd certainly go along with that. Um, write stuff down. Um, Gemma's mentioned old school about where the ideas come from. But write, um, write stuff down, and that kind of will help you flow and help your creativity. And this is true. My nephew, in fact, um, wrote his dissertation by hand and then typed it because it, it gave him more creativity, um, one of the reasons he did it. Um, which is amazing, right? And, and this is this is a, a young fellow who's not that old, so uh, that's pretty true. Um, and also, one other thing, and um, you hear a phrase when we talk about creativity a lot about think outside the box. And my challenge to you is sometimes think inside the box. Outside the box is too big because there's no limits. And whilst no limits is good, we can't see it because it's so much. So if I said invent something, that's really difficult. But if I said maybe uh, I don't know, like change a ki- change a clock, put, put different things. On, as the hands, use your favourite celebrity and create different hands. What would you do? And you might use, I don't know, the rock's arms. So I'm, I'm thinking now inside a box rather than outside a box. Something along those lines can help. Now, the last thing, I've, you know, I've got noted 10, 15 minutes today, but um, people like Edward de Bono are worth looking at, the six thinking hats, um, to get our brain to work in different ways. You may have seen this somewhere before, but, you know, the white hat is about analysing data. The red hat is about looking through my emotional window. The black hat is the negative side to an idea. The yellow hat, the sunshine hat. The green hat is the creative thinking ideas hat. And the blue hat is about process. Google de Bono will give you some hats to put on, help your creativity and help how you see a problem. I recommend that. Wow, look at that. That's 13 minutes. That's gone so quick today. Um, I've got to tell you what we're going to do Thursday. I've got to tell you what we're going to do Thursday. What I thought we'd do on Thursday was about change. I thought we'd do something on change because that's like a big issue at the moment. We're going through change at times. How we react to change, a bit of adapting to change. And um, I was talking to a client actually this morning um, and uh, we were talking about change and he said, oh, you know, sometimes I sometimes struggle with change. And uh, I said, oh, that's quite interesting because a lot of people say they like change, but I think what they do is they like watching change. So we're going to have a little look at that now. How big was that biggest cake? How big was that biggest cake? Grace, if you want to come in late, how big was the biggest cake that was ever made? In metres or feet, in height? How tall was the biggest cake? Now you've got your chat working. Um, And I'll give you that answer. And um, unfortunately, I so wish it was a 500 metre cake, but it's not. So how big that cake was? That cake, five metres. I think, I think... Um, my winner, I'm just going to have to scroll up because there's been so many comments today. Five metres, some handy one for that. Um, yeah, my winner today is going to be Flora. Um, she's gone 10 metres. But the winning cake was, in fact, um, 33 metres tall, which is 108 feet. 33 metres, 108 feet. So I'm off for a bit of that cake. Thanks ever so much for joining me. I really hope I can see you Thursday. We're going to talk about change. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and I'll see you Thursday. Cheers.